Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about making up numbers. Making up numbers is the most important concept on the math section of the SAT. It represents over 14% of the questions, and it's a skill that you wouldn't have developed in high school. So of all the topics that, we've, that we teach here at MindFish, I highly recommend that you really master making up numbers if you want to improve your math score. These questions often have variables in the answers and or the questions. And the idea here is that we're trying to make these problems arithmetic rather than algebra. So here's our approach. We're going to make up a value for every variable in the problem. Then we're going to use those numbers that we made up to solve for the, what the problem is asking for as a number. And we're going to circle that number so we know what we're looking for. Lastly, we're going to plug our numbers that we made up into the answer choices and find the number that we circled. So why do we do this? Well, for starters, there's no partial credit on the SAT. So doing a lot of complicated algebra is a great thing for you to be able to do. Unfortunately, the SAT is not going to reward you for doing it unless you can come up with the right answer. The questions are multiple choice answers. And as a result, we oftentimes can use that to our advantage. This is, again, not something you would do a lot in high school, but on an SAT where you have multiple choice answers, making up numbers can often save you time and cut down on your mistakes. It can save you time because algebra is often very time consuming. And if you do anything wrong in algebra, it often leads to the wrong answer. So basically, we're going to try to make this all about arithmetic skills and rather than hard algebra skills. So some essential tips you have to make sure that the numbers you pick satisfy the constraints of the problem. You can't just arbitrarily pick numbers. While you should keep them as small as possible, fulfill the constraints of any, any constraint that they give you. So if they say A equals 3B plus 4, and we make B equal to 6, we don't have a choice. A has to be 22. And then we can go on and solve the problem from there. Never use the number 0 or 1. And, tr and really try hard not to use the same number for two different variables, if, it, if at all possible. The third thing, and this is probably the most important, no matter what numbers you make up, make sure you write them all down and you're very clear about what you pick and what you want to solve for, which is what you circle. So the idea here is that if you write everything down, you can see what you made up, what you're solving for, and it's very clear what answer you're looking for when you plug your answers into the answer choices. If you don't write things down, it can oftentimes be very confusing as to what you picked, what you solved for. So be organized. So let's look at how we make up numbers on a, uh, a math question. So this question says, if A equals 3B and B equals 2C and D equals 5C, what is D in terms of A? So I'm going to pick A equals 12. Picking A equals 12 forces B to be equal to 4. Because B is 4, C has to be 2. And I don't have a choice here because of the constraints. Now that C is 2, D is 10. I'm going to circle the 10, because that's the number I want. Now it says, what is D in terms of A? Relax, in terms of A just means plugging in A. So I'm going to plug in my A, which was 12, and determine which answer is going to give me 10. And the right answer here will be C. 5 times 12 is 60. 60 over 6 gives me 10. Now no matter what numbers you make up, assuming that you follow the constraints of the problem, you will always get answer choice C. So let's, um, let's talk again a little bit about good numbers. So we talked about small numbers. You want to keep your numbers small to make the arithmetic simple. And you want to try to use whole numbers. So multiples are good, 3, 6, 12, 4, and 12. I'd stay away from many prime numbers because they tend to not have any, anything that goes into them. Well, they always will. Use the number 100 when you're dealing with percentage questions. This will make it as easy as possible to do your first percentage change. And use accurate estimates when making up numbers on geometry questions. So if you're making up an angle, as long as you have 180 degrees in a triangle and 180 degrees in a line, you're usually going to be fine. But the more accurate your angle estimate is, the more accurate the answer choice will be relative to what you see in the picture. So let's look at two more questions dealing with making up numbers. The first is a percent question. So we're going to start with the number 100. Toby, owes X, Toby owns X shares of Google stock. So let's say 100 shares. If he were to sell 20% of his shares in May, he would sell 20 shares. Now he has 80. Now if he sells 40% of his remaining shares, we have to do 40% of 80, which would be 32. So now he's gone from 80 to 32, and he still has 48 shares. So now our answer choice would be 48%. If the answer was in terms of x, we'd be plugging in our choice 100 to look for the number 48. 
Then the next problem, we have x plus y equals 20. So I'm going to pick x is 12 and y is 8. By doing that, I get 12 plus 4, which is 16, plus 8 plus 6, which is 14. And so adding those together, I will get 30. Now again, in, in this problem, it doesn't matter. I can make x and y anything as long as they're equal to 20. So making up numbers hopefully can help you get through some of these harder algebra problems and cut down on some of the mistakes and time-consuming problems that you're having trouble with. Hope to see you soon.